Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native, and the father of the effortless English system that trains you, that teaches you to speak English powerfully, speak English fluently, speak English confidently, speak English effortlessly, think in English. When you train, train with my VIP program, you commit to my VIP program, you commit, don't quit, to my VIP program now, today, at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to that website, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join my VIP program. Commit to my VIP program. Don't quit. Commit, don't quit. At EffortlessEnglishClub.com. We're live on YouTube. Doing YouTube again today. And we're coming back to our book club. Book club. Now, I have only one hour today. I have a meeting later. So, I must limit our time. I'm going to have to go quickly. All right, so let's just, I'm going to jump right in. You know how this works. I ignore your comments and questions in the beginning, then I'll come back. I, I'll try to go fast so I have time for questions and comments later. So let's just go right on. We, we did chapter five last time, so we're going to go to chapter six today. Our book is How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. That's a good book. It's a good book for your English. Um, get the audio book and the regular book. You know, most I I always recommend you get both. Get the you know the book, the text. It doesn't matter. Ebooks are fine. Which whatever you want. But then also get the audio book because the audio book helps with your listening. Obviously, will help with pronunciation. Well, and this will also help your speaking. So audio books are fantastic. And you've got the text, so you can read slowly. You, if you have an ebook, you click words you don't know. You can learn vocabulary. You know, you can read it again and again. Really great. And then you can start listening to the audiobook, especially when you're walking around and doing things. And in this way, it goes deeper. You improve your listening. It's a good combination. All right, so let's go. Chapter six How to Crowd Worry Out of Your Mind. How to crowd worry out of your mind. And this is a really simple technique and it does work. I can tell you it works because I've, I have used this technique. And here's the basic idea. First, he tells a story. He always begins the chapter with a story. And it's a woman. Uh, it's a story about a woman who um, you know, had a big tragedy. Her children uh, died. Everybody died basically around her. And she was all alone and, and she was she was so worried and miserable and unhappy. And what finally helped her was basically she got really, really, really busy. So this is the technique for number six, chapter six. When you have a lot of worry in your life, or you're worrying a lot, you find you you know, you you realize that you're you're worrying, you're stressed out. Get more busy. Get very busy. Fill your day with activities. It is difficult to worry. This is from the book. It is difficult to worry while you are busy doing something that requires planning and thinking. And that's true. I found this recently with my babies. I, I was super stressed out. I was worried, worried, worried about them. But then I had to do a lot of things for them. I had to, you know, we had to uh, help them. We had to get their uh, medical treatment scheduled. We had to do all these kind of things running around, which was stressful for sure. But uh, on the other hand, it I, I had less time to sit and just worry, just to sit and think about bad stuff, sit and worry about what might happen to one of the babies. And oh my God, one of the babies might die. Um, I got so busy that I didn't really have much time to think about those terrible things so much 
because I was so focused on all of these other things I had to do, right? All of these plans, all of these activities, all of these decisions I had to make again and again and again. In fact, that was what really gave me most of the stress, but it did, it does help with worry. So this woman, what she did, and this is the woman in the story, she basically fills, filled her life with stimulating activities. Here, in this situation, stimulating means, basically means interesting. Interesting. So she filled her life with interesting activities, you know. Uh, you can do sports, you could do physical activities, like physical training, you know, exercise, clubs, classes, travel, reading, studying, on and on and on. Fill up your day when you find you're worrying. Then there's another quote. It says, men in, lab in libraries and laboratories, men in libraries and laboratories are usually too absorbed in their tasks, their jobs, their tasks, to worry about themselves. So this is kind of the secret. This is why worry uh, gets less when you're busy. It's because, see, worry is, is you're focused inside, right? When you're worried, you're focused on your own emotions, your own fears, your own thoughts, right? What causes worry? It's your thoughts, your thoughts, your fearful thoughts about something happening. Well, if you focus on the outside, right? You focus on something you're doing on the outside. Maybe you're making something with your hands. Uh, maybe you're studying something. Maybe you're, you know, again, doing some research, whatever. But it's some outside activity. It's outside of your mind. Well, now all your thinking, all your mind is focused on this, this job you're doing, this activity you're doing. Sports is a good example. Like if you, if you go into the gym and you lift some very heavy weights, well, because that's so difficult, your your all of your mind has to focus on lifting the weight, right? You have to uh, use all of your power, use all of your mind, all of your concentration, because otherwise it's dangerous, right? You might drop it. And so you focus all of your mind on this outside thing, lifting the weight, and your worry will disappear for a while. And he, he mentions the reason is because it's impossible for any human mind, impossible for any human mind to consciously, consciously think of more than one thing at a time. We have this idea of multitasking, but really it's not, uh, it's, it's not a very uh, useful thing and it's very, very difficult and it's basically impossible to consciously. Now we can do things unconsciously, right? Sometimes something becomes a habit so much we don't need to think about it anymore. We, you can just do it and not even thinking. Like like driving, for example. For, you know, I, sometimes driving is so automatic I don't even I'm not even thinking about it. But for any conscious activity, we can only think focus on one thing at a time. And this is useful. This means if you have if you're focusing on something negative, you're focusing on something negative, you're thinking about bad things. Well, just force yourself, push yourself to do something else and to focus on something else. Change your focus on something positive and automatically the negative thing will disappear from your mind. It might try to come back, of course. That's why you choose to do something that is uh, difficult or that makes you really busy. So then it really pushes out. So sports are good for that. Like if you did, um, you know, boxing or jujitsu, you're going to forget about everything else for a while because it's so, it, you must focus on it with your mind. You'll forget about your worries. So it's really great. So get busy. And again, this is, a, this is lose yourself in action, this, he says. Lose yourself in action, right? Thinking about yourself too much. This is also depression. People get depressed. It's not just worry. Also, like feeling sad, feeling depressed. This same technique works. Like, you know, if a, you break up with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Well, if you sit at home alone all the time doing nothing, you're going to feel sad. You're just going to think about them all the time and feel terrible, right? It's going to get worse and worse and worse. So what do you need to do? 
after you break up. Get busy. Go out. Get out of the house. Go out with your friends. Uh, join, you know, do sports. Join clubs and activities. Go see movies. Do exercise. Fill your whole day with activities. Then you don't have much time to feel so sad about the other person. It helps a lot. It, it's, you know, it's not 100%, but it helps. It reduces the worry. It reduces the sadness a lot. It's very helpful. Just sitting around thinking all the time is the worst thing to do. All right. That's basically that. That's chapter six. Chapter seven is kind of interesting. It says, don't let the Beatles get you down. Not the band, the bugs, Beatles, um, which is a weird, strange title. He tells a story about a guy who uh, was in a submarine during World War II under the water, right? And then the uh, above him, the there were ships attacking his submarine, and his submarine was going lower, 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 lower. It's like in a movie, right? Like Das Boot. And he thought he was going to die, and he, he was so afraid. We're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. But then in this moment, in this moment when he thought he was going to die, he, he was sure he was going to die. He thought his submarine was going to you know, be destroyed. He was going to die. That in this moment, suddenly, he remembered. He remembered his past earlier in his life at home. And he remembered worrying before in life he, in, at home. He remembered all these stupid little small things that he used to worry about. And they all seem so stupid to him now because now he was facing death probably, right? He was very close to dying, everybody on his ship, close to dying. So that's something truly big, right? And he realized, okay, I'm about to die. Now this is real danger. All the things in the past, all the stupid little fears I had, all the stupid little worries I had were ridiculous, they were so small. Why did I worry about them before? So this is perspective. That's what this, uh, this chapter is saying, is you have to remember perspective because many times we worry about very small things, things that in fact are not important at all. Um, Dale Carnegie says, we often face major disasters of life bravely. So often we will face something very difficult and we'll be brave, we'll be strong. But then we let the trifles, the small things, get us down. Now, of course, not always. Sometimes big things are tough. <laughs> but, uh, but, he, but he is right. Oftentimes we will just let lots and lots of little things. I'm, I'm guilty of doing this many times where I'll just lots, li lots of little irritating things, little small things, uh, they, they, you know, they'll, they'll annoy me. Not so much make me worry, but they'll annoy me. Um. But then sometimes when, when really big, tough situations come, I'll calm down and I'll deal with them better. It's kind of, some, it's kind of human nature a little bit. And then he gives a quote from uh, a, an old British prime minister. Life is too short to be little or to be small. I've seen it. Life is too short to be small. Life is too short to be little, either way. And it means, don't, it's it's the idea, there's a whole book about this, don't sweat the small stuff. It's kind of, it, it was a bestseller. And it's basically a whole book about this topic, this chapter, which basically means, don't worry about the little things in life, the little problems, the little worries, the little fears, because they're small. You're wasting so much energy. You're wasting so much time about this stuff. And not and none of it's important. Just ignore the small stuff. Just let it go because it's not important. Focus on the big things in life. Focus on what's most important. And that's it. That's easy. That's the end of that chapter. That's the end of chapter seven. So very simple. Just remind yourself. Anytime you are worrying, think about it and think, is this really important is this something big or is this just some small stupid thing and try to just for, forget about it if it's small okay finally 
Chapter 8, a law that will outlaw your worries. Okay, chapter 8 is another technique worrying about helping you with worry. And this technique is basically to remember the law of averages. Remember the law of averages. Statistics. Statistics. This is a really good one, especially now with television. People worry about things that are ridiculous. So, for example, for example, um, terrorism. Terrorism. You'll see it in the uh, in the news, right? Terrorism. Ah, and people get uh, angry, and of course, they should get angry. But um, but also sometimes people get afraid. But actually, you know, statistically, there's almost zero chance you will be attacked by a terrorist. It's almost zero, right? It's the statistics are so tiny. Uh, it's the same with airplane travel. Some people get very worried and nervous flying in an airplane. But again, if you look at the statistics, it's more safe than driving. So lots of people are fine. They're not afraid to drive. They get in a car, no problem. And I understand it. It, it seems like it's safer because it's on the ground. It's more natural for us. <laughs> but the actual real statistics, the real the reality is that airplanes are more safe. And of course, why are they more safe? Because we're more careful. The engineering is more careful. The safety features are more careful. Because it is a more dangerous situation, the companies, the air companies, are extra, extra, extra careful. So in fact, the percentage chance of dying in an airplane crash is actually smaller, much, much, much smaller than being hurt or dying in a in a car crash. So you can try to remind yourself of this. You know, this is basically using logic. You're using logic to overcome worry. So he's basically saying that anytime you find yourself worrying, you're you're afraid, you're worried about some possible situation, really try to think about it rationally. Calm down and think rationally, like what is the percent chance? Try to make it into a number. And you might have to guess, of course. But um, just try to choose a percentage chance. What is the percent chance something bad will happen to me? Right? Like if you're, if you're afraid of flying, you could even get on get on the internet and you could look online and find out, you know, what is the percent chance if for any person flying that something bad will happen. And it's tiny. It's very, very small. And this is this might help you with many different situations. Not all situations. It's just another technique, another useful technique. All right. So that's it. Those are our three chapters. Just doing three today. Because I have, as I said, I have a meeting in the, soon. So we'll do chapter nine. Maybe la probably later this week. Later this week, we'll do chapter nine and ten. All right, coming back. Okay, good. All right, so now it's time for questions and comments. Questions and comments live. Um, we have a few minutes. As I said, I have a, I have a meeting I have to go to soon, so I have just a few minutes to take our questions and comments. Today we are live on YouTube. So YouTube today. I don't know tomorrow. Yesterday I was on Facebook. Yesterday I was live on Facebook. Today live on YouTube. So as usual. So if you have a question, if you have a comment, now's the time. Uh, I'll go back and read some of them. As usual, people saying hello from their different countries. Hi from Korea, Vietnam, Pakistan, Laos, Laos Azerbaijan, Ukraine, Uzbekistan, Morocco, Mongolia, Kurdistan, Dallas, Texas. Um, that's America. Somaliland. Venezuela. Oh, good luck to you. 
Georgia, Georgia, the country Georgia, um, Bangladesh, Iran, Somalia, Tajikistan. Okay, here's an interesting question, which I cannot answer, but it's kind of funny, so I'm going to... AJ, why did the Western Roman Empire crumble? Well, that's an awfully big question. Oh, the Western Roman Empire. Well, uh, immigration is one reason. Migration, right? Barbarians, foreigners, uh, too many coming in, overwhelmed uh, the Roman Empire. Why did that happen? Because, you know, lots of corruption. Um, you know, that's a big story because it, hap it didn't happen instantly, right? So there are lots of factors. Um, that's a huge topic. <laughs> those are those two factors. Those are two big ones, right? The society started to fall apart. It was an empire, too many different kinds of people. It was not one unified nation. Then they started to let in huge numbers of um, you know, German and other tribes. And eventually those tribes, you know, uh, took over, attacked them and betrayed them. Kind of what's happening in uh, America and other parts of the world. <laughs> There's a warning there for the West. All right, let's see. Okay, Kid Magician says, I have a question. I study English. I learn by heart. Oh, I see, like you're memorizing. Uh, I learn by heart a lot of your videos. Is this a good way to speak English? Thanks. Uh, yes and no. You don't try to memorize, you know, like uh, forcing yourself. I mean, that's the key thing. But if you're just doing lots and lots of repetition and you're you're imitating me, right, trying to speak like me, you're listening, listening, listening a lot, you're really learning very deeply, that's great. That's great. But don't get stressed out about every single little tiny word because um, Usually that creates too much uh, stress and, and it can actually cause some problems. So, uh, but lots of repetition and learning very, very deeply. Fantastic. Keep doing it. You know, are you getting good results? If you, you probably are getting good results. So yes, keep going. Okay, let's see. Made you strong. I mean, the elite that you've been talking about in recent years. Um, I'm not sure what this. I don't understand that top question, so I'm going to skip that one. La 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 la. Let's keep going. Go. People are. I'm going to go back to the bottom and go go up. Okay. Now here's a good one. Ahmed says worries are because we think about the future. But if we can't expect the future, why worrying? Well, that's exactly right. And earlier in the book. Uh, that was one of the um, methods or ideas to help with worry, right? To focus on the present moment, to focus on now, because that exists. Yeah. What is worry? Worry is fear about the future. Fear about the future. Should we think about the future to plan? Of course. But when we have too much fear about the future, then it's worry. It doesn't help us really. Um, and that's when it's a some it's often good to focus on right now. What can I do now? You can't do anything in the future, right? Because it's always in the future. It's always gone. You can plan, you can think, but even planning happens right now in the present. Thinking happens now in the present. So focus on, you know, like, for example, if you're worried about money, you're worried the economy, the world economy, right? Money. You're worried the world economy is going to collapse, <laughs> crash. Well, what to do? Should you every day just worry and worry and worry about it and be afraid? That doesn't help anything. Just makes you stressed and feel bad. If you really think that's going to happen, what should you do? Well, you should take action now, right? Take action now. I don't, you know, think about it, but, you know, start saving money now. Make your life more simple now. Prepare now. Make plans now, right? You can focus on the solutions, preparing instead of worrying. So I'm at good point. And Hamid is basically gives exactly the same point. A nice summary. Live at the moment brings happiness. Yeah, focusing mostly on the present. Of course, we, we should think ahead. 
Just don't worry about the future. Plan for it. All right, HMB says, I have a problem because at school we learn British English. <laughs> so it seems difficult for me to understand American English. So what should I do? I'm just joking. Um, do what you're doing right now. Listen to Americans. It's fine. You're learning British English. British English is fine. But um, if you want to also understand American English and also, you know, Australian English, just, uh, you know, the great thing is with the Internet, listen to some podcasts like mine from Americans and then you'll get the American accent. And maybe it's difficult right now, but with time, if you listen to my show every day, listen to my videos every day, You'll get used to my accent. You'll get used to the American uh, English, American accent, American pronunciation, um, American vocabulary. And you can do the same, like I said, you could do the same with Australians if you wanted to. Or any, you know, Irish, Scottish. Because you say British English, but really there's English English. There's also Scottish English, right? God Bangkok says, have you ever been to Thailand? Uh, yes, I lived in Thailand. I lived in Bangkok for two years. So what the crop? This is a question a lot of people ask me. Dinesh Arya says, hi, AJ. Is it possible to learn two languages together? It is possible. Yes, it's, it's certainly possible. Uh, it's just a matter of time, right? It's a matter of time and energy. If you have the extra time and the extra energy, you can do it, right? So obviously you have, uh, you know, a limited number of hours per day. If you have four hours per day for language, well, you could do four hours per day of one language like English and you will, um, you know, improve quickly. Or you could do two hours per day of English and two of Spanish, well, you'll learn both, but you'll learn both a bit more slowly because, right, you're doing fewer hours each day. So it's just your decision. If you only have two hours a day total, then probably learning two is not a very good idea, right? You need at least, at least two. But if you've got a lot of time, you've got four hours a day, six hours a day, eight hours a day for language learning, yeah, you could do you know, you could either learn one very fast, then go to the next one, or you could try to do both at the same time. Um, up to you, really. Ankit Kumar asks, which book will you start next? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know which book we do next. Zarian says, hello from Italy. Hello. Okay, Asik asked the same question as earlier, basically. What should be the main way to understand both speakers like Americans and British? You just need to listen to both every day. Every day is best, right? So um, if, if, if you uh, already know in American English very well, you want to understand British better, then find some British podcasts or British videos or British lessons, right? That's all. You just need them both. They're, they're, you know, they are the same language. People get a bit stressed about this, like, you know, thinking like American English and British English are totally different languages almost. They're not. OK, most it's the same language, but there are some differences. And even inside, you know, each country, like I said, there are differences in pronunciation and sometimes with vocabulary use. So Scottish, the Scottish accent is very different than like the standard you know, British BBC accent. Um, you know, for me, the Scottish accent, if it's strong, is very difficult to understand. The Irish accent is very different. In the United States, we have a New York accent. We have Southern accents. We have a Boston accent. Um, black Americans have their own way of speaking, uh, especially those from the city. Um... So, you know, all of these can be quite different. And then, of course, Australian, New Zealand. They're all the same language, but there are 
right? If, if you really need to focus on a certain area, you know you're going to Canada, then try to find a few Canadian podcasts or audiobooks or teachers and really focus on them. If you want to do both, then mix it. It's okay. You'll be fine. It's kind of like, you know, there's the same issue in Spanish. There's Latin American Spanish and there's Spain Spanish. And even in Latin America, you know, there's Mexican Spanish, there's Colombian Spanish, there's Argentinian Spanish, which is kind of famous for having a, a much different accent. But it, they're still the same language, okay? They're still the same language. They can still understand each other. Uh, maybe sometimes it's a little difficult, but it's still the same language. Just like for me, like a Scottish person with a strong accent, yes, of course, if they use a lot of slang, if they talk fast, they have a strong accent. Yes, I can have trouble understanding an Irish or a Scottish person. But if they slow down, <laughs> they don't use the local slang, that's eh, no problem. Now, the good thing is, for you speaking, however, I recommend try to speak with, try to use a standard accent, right? The common, the most common accent, right? There's kind of a common standard British accent, right? You might call it the BBC accent. You might call it this, you know, the standard British accent. Um, it's the one basically everybody understands easily, just like there's a standard American accent. Some people call it the Midwest accent, the middle of the country. That's the accent. Um, but it's, you know, the standard American accent. And everybody understands that. Iner Andres uh, Chavera Rivas says, For me, the best way to avoid worry is making sports outdoors. Sports are a great way to deal with worry and stress. It's a good technique listening to this podcast while I'm walking. Yes, I agree. I also refuge myself in painting when I'm stressed. See, I mean, these are great. All these are great activities you just mentioned. Um, painting, you have to focus, right? Painting or drawing requires a very strong focus to do. And this is going to push out the worries. And anything physical helps a lot, right? Physical activities, physical sports. Again, because you have to focus, you have to concentrate. They just naturally will push out worries. The other thing is that when you're moving your body, you know, it just, it, you physically feel better and that helps you be more positive and worry less. So great, uh, great comment. All right, let me just jump down here and see what we got. Oh, this is interesting. I've been learning Latin in my college, so I understand academic English more easily than street English. Yeah, right. Yeah, of course. Because, you know, that Latin um, in English, Latin, how to say this? In English, uh, the vocabulary that comes directly or more directly from Latin or French, right? The kind of Latin French words in English are more academic uh, they're seen as a little more high class in the past, long in the past in England, you know, more upper class. And then the more common street English is more, comes more from the Saxon, the kind of Germanic languages, which of course ultimately are Latin, but a little less connected directly to Latin, more Germanic or German Saxon, um, and though commonly, especially in the past, that was more for the <clears throat> lower classes. So it's kind of the common street, right? So I'm um, trying to think of a... a uh, but anyway, there are many examples. So if, you're, if you study Latin, or uh, a lot of people who, have, who come from Romance or Latin languages like French, Italian, Spanish, they have the same issue. They can actually read quite well English, especially more academic, because the vocabulary is more Latin. It's more, it's quite similar to Spanish, Italian, French, much more similar. But then the more street, common conversational street language is much more difficult for them. And typically in schools and textbooks, they often teach this more academic kind of English. And this is why, again, 
even after many years studying in school, you've got this kind of Latin kind of vocabulary, formal grammar, academic type English, but then you listen to a movie and you, you're lost. You're like, what are they saying? I don't understand what they're saying because they're speaking the real street level common language. And I think it's backwards. I think you should learn the more common language first because it's, it is the most common. It's what people use every day. And then learn the academic stuff. There's, the academic stuff's okay. It's, there's not, it's not wrong. It's just it's, uh, it's less common, right? It's used in more specific situations. And so if you're going to be talking to people, if you want to have friends, if you're going to have business meetings, if you're going to travel, you need that common English conversational language first. That has to be the foundation. All right. Let's see, I've got a few more minutes until I have to go. When will the next live show be? Uh, hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow. Maybe on Facebook tomorrow. S. J. Uh, Jung or Jung, uh, or Jung. I love your mindset, thoughts, ideas, and the way you think and speak. I'm one of your enthusiastic fans. Well, thank you very much. You should follow me on Twitter or Gab. Say hello. You can chat with me each day. <laughs> I'll, I'll not, maybe not every day. I'm a little busy right now with my two new babies, but uh, I'll try. I'm AJ Hogue on uh, Gab, AJ Hogue on Twitter, A-J-H-O-G-E on both. This is a strange. God Bankek, have you ever eaten food? What does that mean? Of course. I'd be dead if I didn't eat food. Are you talking about Thai food? Of course I've eaten Thai food. Um, oh, this is interesting. Levente. Is it Levente? Levent? Says, thank you, AJ. We are sitting here in an English classroom in Budapest watching you and learning a lot. Thanks a lot. Well, that's cool. Hello to the whole class. Hi. Hello in Budapest. Hope I can visit. I've heard it's a beautiful city. Well, that's kind of cool. <laughs> now I can speak English, but I was tired for two years. Well, yeah, it does take some energy sometimes. Okay, here's a common question, Mehmet. Me, me, met says, AJ, how much time do I need to spend every day to learn English? Of course, more time means faster improvement. I generally would say two hours per day is at least, at least. If you can do more, of course, it's great. But try to do at least two hours per day. I used to say one, but I find I think two is better. Well, obviously, it's better. But really, I think uh, two is the better answer. Why you don't answer some of our questions? Because there are too many of them and I don't have enough time. And they're coming fast, right? You're constantly typing them. So I'll do my best, but, uh, you know, I do lots of shows. If I missed your question this time, just relax. Maybe next time, you know. Okay. Jitumani Deka from India. I feel empty the day when you don't upload any episodes in the podcast. I get delighted when you talk about the Gita. Well, I love, love, love the Gita. Uh, yoga and some valuable life experience lessons from India, Assam. Thank you. That's very nice. Yes, well, Indians know all about the Bhagavad Gita, which is just amazing. I recommend you read it, the Bhagavad Gita. Get a, get a translation. All right, let's see. I love you. I'm from Thailand. Pimboon. Well, thank you very much. Kapkun Krop. Okay, now here's a good common comment from Anas Kasim. Our problem in schools is that our teachers teach English and speaking in their language, and it destroys us 
and makes us feel afraid of English. Well, that is exactly a big problem. It is a big, big, big problem that you take an English class, but the teacher does not speak English. They speak in your language, right? Like if you're in, I don't know which country you're in. Let's say you're in Saudi Arabia. So you go to, and you're in Saudi Arabia and you go to your English class and the teacher speaks Arabic most of the time. Well, that's crazy, right? I mean, that's, it's crazy. How can you learn English when you're listening to Arabic the whole time? Or, you know, you're in uh, Russia and you and the teacher speaking Russian most of the time. Well, of course, you're not going to learn much English. It's it's terrible. This is terrible. Now, does this does not mean it does not does not mean that the teacher must always be native speaker. That's not necessary. Not always. Yeah, I think uh, as you become maybe more intermediate level, you should listen to native speakers. Definitely you should as an independent learner. But you can find people like me. You can find people like me on YouTube. You can find websites, right? There's so many. So you can let you can get any accent you want, any native speaker from, you know, again, Canada, America, anywhere through, you know, throughout Britain, Australia, New Zealand, uh, South Africa, <laughs> right? Um, India even. So it's not a problem. Um, so it's okay, you know, if, if the teacher is not, I think what happens is two problems. Sometimes, number one, the teacher really does not know English very well. That's a disaster. That's not good. Probably should not be teaching English. But the other uh, situation is that the teacher is not confident. They do know English, but they, they worry because their accent's not perfect. They have some accent. They have a local accent. Like they have a Russian accent. They have a French accent. And they oh, and they, they feel like kind of uh, nervous about this. So they, they almost avoid speaking English in class too much. And that's a mistake. That's a mistake. It's, it, you know, I was, I was talking about this yesterday, I think. It's, if, just teach. Just speak English. It's okay if you have an accent. You know, if, let's say you're, um, say you're German <laughs> and you're teaching English. If you're, your English is you're fluent, you're good. You're not perfect, but you're good. That's fine. That's fine. Just speak English in class. Just speak with your German accent. It's no problem. Your students can still, later, at home, they can listen to Americans. They can listen to British people. Okay? So you can still help them a lot, even though you are not native. You can help them a lot. They can learn a lot of vocabulary. They can improve their listening. They can learn lots of phrases, everything from, from you still. You can help them so much. So I, I encourage uh, teachers in different countries... Even if you're not native, you know, try to speak English in class. Most of the time, like 99% of it, 95%, something like that. And there are different techniques you can use. TPR, TPRS, you know, sign language. There's lots of things you can do. So you mostly speak in English, even with beginners. Okay, don't worry if you have an accent. It's, it's not a problem. Guillermo says, hello, I'm late. Hello. Hi, hi, Guillermo from Dominican Republic. Sharira Khan says, love you. Thank you. Nasor. Uh, oh, hey, Nasor. I, mean, I remember you from two days ago. People always make a fantasy story about the future. Right. They do. And it's often it's about bad things that might happen instead of good things. Yeah, you're right. You know, we all do it. Right. We kind of fantasize, imagine about the future. And uh, and how crazy is it to think to just constantly imagine bad things all the time? And then it makes us feel terrible. And often, usually most of them never happen. Right. Most of those terrible, terrible things never happen. I mean, I do this, too. I'm not I'm not criticizing. But uh, it is just true. It's, we do this, and it's not helpful for, for us. Florin says, maybe you can come to Romania someday. Hmm, maybe. Ahmad says, before I had a lot of problems to speak, but now my problems decrease day by day. For that, I'm thankful, AJ. Well, thank you. That's nice. Very nice. Thank you. Hello from India, Tamil Nadu. I want to go there. I want to go to, to South India. I've been to North India three times, but I have never been to South India. Everyone says it's fantastic. 
Sushil Kumar says, I'm your big fan. Thank you. <coughs> wow, this is a great comment. Christian Santana, oops. That's, that's, Christian Santana says, thank you so much, AJ. Since I started to listen to you, I feel like a native speaker. Well, that's great. Man, fantastic. That's, of course, that's you doing lots of great work and listening every day. So congratulations to you. Okay, let's see. I'm so honored you picked my comment. No worries. Love you from, uh, from Egypt. Okay, where are you from, Sushil? I don't know if you're asking me this or someone in the comments, but I'll, some people ask me. Sometimes people don't know. I'm from, uh, I'm American. I'm from the United States. So I have a, I have a standard American accent, right? I, I, my accent, the reason people say, AJ, you're easy to understand. And one reason is that my pronunciation is very, very, very standard. It's the common uh accent you f you will see mostly on television for example american television newscasters those kind of people um most most tv shows most movies uh the americans are speaking with a standard american accent and that's what i have so most of you have heard that many times yeah <laughs> Luis Maha says, you're like a roller coaster, live on Facebook, live on YouTube. You're driving me crazy. <laughs> Sorry, Luis. Yeah, right now I'm just experimenting. I'm trying to decide. Should I do YouTube more? Should I do Facebook more? And uh, on Twitter, people are kind of voting. On Gab, people are voting. On Gab, YouTube was winning for sure. A lot more people said they want YouTube. On Facebook, I mean on Twitter... People, it was probably half and half, half YouTube, half Facebook. Now, uh, just today on Twitter, uh, who was it? Was it Andre? Uh, I can't remember who said it. But anyway, someone reminded me that Facebook, you have to have an account, but anyone can watch YouTube. So that's one advantage of YouTube. We'll see. Don Preet Sandhu says, do you like Indian people? I do. I have visited. In India was my very first time to leave America. It was my first trip. My first trip outside of my own country was to India. And it was an amazing trip. And then I came back two more times. Also, I have been to Nepal, your, your uh, what, your brother country, kind of, your, your neighbor to the north. Uh, so, yep, love Indian food. It's fantastic. And uh, most especially, love the Gita. Mimuas, uh, AJ, do you know Argentina? Hugs. I have never been to Argentina, but I would like to. I have heard about it. Uh, yeah, sounds great, but I just I, I have not been there. Same with Brazil. I've heard lots and lots and lots about Brazil, uh, but I have not been to Brazil yet. Srirat asks, what time will you be on Facebook tomorrow? About this time. Follow me on Twitter or Gab. Follow me on Twitter and I, I will announce when I'm going live. That's the best, uh, the best way to catch me. You must come to Brazil. Speaking of Brazil, Astronoi Brazil says you must come to Brazil someday. I agree. I very much. I would like to go to Brazil. Okay. Is there any lesson for American accents? I have a course now. I have a whole course called the pronunciation course. It's just about American accent training. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. You can, for more information, go to my website, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to the bottom. There's a menu. You'll see pronunciation course. Click that for more information about that course. Uh, uh, 
Okay, let's see this. Nasima. AJ, you don't like to answer new people. Oh, I don't mind answering new people. I just, uh, you know, I pick questions I think are interesting for everybody. Sometimes if the question's too specific to just you, if I don't think it's helpful to everyone else, then I ignore it. And sometimes I just, I'm going through here fast. I just don't see it, okay? So just be patient, guys. Patience. I'll come, I'm doing live shows a lot, okay? So if I don't get you today, you can catch me another time. Or, you know, the best way, if you have a question, the best way to get your question answered is to send it to me on Twitter or Gab. You have a better chance, okay? Because, uh, you know, right now I'm not on Twitter so much because of my babies. But, um, but we have other Effortless English members who follow me on Twitter, who follow me on Gab. And they also answer questions. They're very good. VIP members who are very successful. And their answers are excellent also. So if you need answers to your questions, that's the best way to do it 100%. Follow me on Twitter. Send a question. Follow me on Gab. Send a question. A.J. Hogue, A-J-H-O-G-E. That's the best way to do it. So, any, But anyway, let's see what your question is. I live in, uh, I guess it's USA, use, and I don't speak English well. Uh, oh, for all appointments, I need an interpreter. Please, I need help. Okay. Well, yeah, that sucks, right? It's hard. It's hard. I understand. Um, well, I mean, you know, I... Get my book, <laughs> okay? EffortlessEnglish.com, not, not the club. EffortlessEnglish.com. The audiobook's free. Go to that website, EffortlessEnglish.com. Just EffortlessEnglish, not the club. EffortlessEnglish.com. <clears throat> uh, you can buy my book. It's not expensive. Buy it on Amazon. And the audiobook is free. And that will give you the whole big answer how to what you need to do step by step exactly what you need to do every day and why. Okay, so don't panic. Don't get afraid. Don't get so worried. Hmm? Use some of these techniques with worry. I mean, the good news is you're in America, so you're surrounded by English now. But the problem is your level's low and everybody around you is speaking you know, at a high level, right? They're native speakers. So right now you can't understand anything. It feels stressful. So for a while, you need to listen to easier audios that, like my podcast. Audiobooks will help you a lot. And especially TV shows, TV and movies. Use my movie technique. Look at my videos, YouTube videos. I have a video on my YouTube channel. I have a video, movie technique. Use that. It will help you a lot with that street English the street English that you are dealing with, that you're having problems with now in, in the United States. Sushil again says, when I feel bored in speaking English, what to do? This is the last question because I have a meeting. I have to go in two minutes. Uh, when you feel bored, just change your routine, right? Sometimes we get, um, we get bored because we're doing exactly the same thing, right? So maybe, you know, you're, you're listening to the same podcast for the same amount of time, doing the same thing. So sometimes it's good to just change suddenly if you're getting bored. So for example, for example, maybe you're doing listening, 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 focusing on listening. That's good. You should do that. But maybe after s several months, you're starting to get a little bored with listening. You're just like, I'm tired of listening all the time. So take a break. One month, focus on reading. Just just kind of take a break from listening for one month, not forever, but for just one month, and just get books and just focus on reading, reading, reading only. It'll kind of change your routine a bit. This can help with the boredom. Especially, you know, choose reading that's different, kind of different topics. This can, you know, when, so when you change the topics, you change your focus, um, this can help your brain. You'll, you'll, you'll feel less bored. It's just a change. You know, it's the same with exercise, by the way, right? If you exercise, you you know this. Sometimes, like maybe um, I'll do running. I might be running. And I'll be focusing on running, running, running for a year. And then I just start, I find, I start get bo getting bored with running. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm kind of tired of running. So what do I do? Do I stop exercising and become super fat? No, <laughs> right? I just change my exercise routine. I'll focus more on strength. Right? I'll focus more on pull-ups and push-ups and other kinds of exercise. 
So I'm still feeling good. I'm still exercising, but I'm not running anymore. I'm doing something else. Still in good shape, still good fitness, but I've, now I have something a little bit new, new different challenge. That's kind of how you do it. It's the same idea as with exercise. Hey guys, I have a business meeting. I have to go right now. Um, I'm going to try to be back again tomorrow, probably tomorrow on Facebook video live. Until then, uh, thank you again. I'm, you know, I apologize. I can't get all questions because there's so many and they come fast, but I appreciate all of you. Lots of love to you for joining me. Thank you so much. Say hi to me on Twitter. Say hi to me on Gab and, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. And as always go to effortlessenglishclub.com. Speak fluently, speak powerfully, speak effortlessly, speak confidently. Join, commit to my VIP program, Commit Don't Quit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com.